Hi, I'm Chacha. I'm going to show you the making of this oak pendant. First, I pick the dry seed and roughly remove the humps and white powder to get a better working surface. Here, I'm using a skew from my wood carving tool set. Oh, please wear gloves to protect your fingers just to be safe. You can also use a rough file which is usually being used in metalwork or woodworking, like this one. Or sand it smooth with a sanding paper. Use 240 grit or less by number. Don't forget the edges in the back of the seed. Now this tool is particularly useful to smoothen the back and the base of the carving. And now we can make a sketch for our carving. I'll just roughly draw some shapes, making sure that every object's got enough space. Firstly, let's draw the hole. Use the small gouge and make a peak on the top of the seat. That will help us stabilize the drilling afterwards. Hold the gouge firmly, push the blade into the peat, and turn your wrist like turning a doorknob. Then just keep pushing and turning. And that's how to drill a hole using just a hand tool. Now turn it around and drill from the back. This seed is a bit thick, so I want to reduce the thickness with a big gouge before drilling. Then just do the same like we just did in the front. And just keep drilling and digging. I drill holes before carving other stuff because the seed is still easy to grab and no need to worry about harming any details. Oh, just skip this part if you have a driller. And finally, we dig through. Now just use the screw or craft knife to remove the remains and clear the wall inside and the edges too. Also, you can use a needle file if it's available. Now let's move on to carve our main objects. I'd like to begin with highlighting the parts I want using a V parting tool. You can also get a smaller one for a complex design. By carving the outlines of each leaves and acorn, I know exactly where I'm going to keep and where to remove in the next step. Then let's carve deep and create a background by removing the unwanted part. I'd like to start with cutting the edges of the objects and make a bigger gap to surround them. This could lower the chance of hurting the objects by accident when removing the unwanted part. Using the gouge could dig deeper and faster. Use the bigger one for the broad spaces and, of course, the smaller one for narrow spaces. Try to make it deeper, so your main objects could stand out. But the avocado seeds are not as strong as wood, so just keep that in mind. Here I want to create some movement for the leaves and connect them with that rumby shaped stone in the middle.
if you remember how an acorn looks like, you must know what I'm doing. I'm making a two-dimension acorn into a three-dimension. The cap should be a bit higher than the body, like this. And also the edges should have a nice curve. In this part, I'm cutting the shape of the small oak leaf. It's small and short, so I'm using a craft knife. You can use any smaller skew or knife. Here, I'm using a skew to work on the bigger leaf. And smoothen the corner with my craft knife. I can use the back of the blade because I've sharpened it. Then I'm using the gouge here because I want to keep the corner round. After all the objects got their basic figure, now let's work on the curve and details. First, Let's deepen the middle of the leaf, create some sort of curve that might make it look more realistic. Carve deeper with the big gouge where the midrib should be. Then create the midrib by keeping the cuts stop at the middle of the leaf. Then carefully carve the other side to create a line. Now gradually, you'll see the midrib is coming up. Always smoothen the edges of every object whenever they look sharp. That will prevent your work get hurt or chipped. Now let's create the smaller details to other leaves. For the small leaves, I just engrave a line as the midrib. Always keep the finest details to the last. The scales on the acorn cap. Start by drawing the scales, then replace all the pencil mark with real cuts, because the pencil marks would fade during the carving. Now carve very slow and very careful. Now let's start from the top again. Create a little depth to make every scales look like they are layering one under another from the stem to the edge of the cap. Oops, I almost forget the vein. After the carving is done, I usually use tongue oil to protect my work. Just simply brush some oil on the seed and you'll see its color changes dramatically. Wipe off all the oil and leave just a thin layer and let dry. Repeat this process for three times or more until you get the results you like.
thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy it. More information in the description box below. Have a great day, and see you next time.